travel. It can be your best friend or your worst enemy. It can be something that is a life goal for you and your spouse, or it might just be something you have to endure to get where you're going. Now, regardless of how you feel about travel, I think we can all relate to the frustration that sets in when a single snowflake or one drop of rain changes our plans for the entire day. It can back up traffic for miles, change train schedules, or cause you to have a layover. It can be very frustrating when all we can think about is how to get from point A to B. We just need to get from here to there the quickest, easiest way possible. The same mindset can seep into our faith so easily. We just want to get from here to there. We just need to get to heaven. We just need to see Jesus. We have to get through these hard times. We have to get over this hill of trial and find ourselves in paradise. That's not always how life goes, is it? And that's why doubt can be so scary because doubt can throw off our plans. Doubt can make us second guess our destination altogether and make us wonder if maybe we've been going down the wrong path or if maybe, just maybe, there's really no light at the end of the tunnel after all. Maybe you're wondering if God's even real, if uh, Jesus is who he said he was, if the scriptures can be trusted, whatever it might be. If you've ever felt that way, I want you to know that you're not alone. It's just that some of us are a little better at hiding our questions than others. That's what I love about Thomas. Because in John 20, we find a raw, gritty, emotional, real person struggling with doubt. See, if I can set the scene, Jesus has died. And these men who have spent years following them, they've left their jobs, their families, their livelihoods to follow Jesus are now wondering if it was all for naught. Now, all the disciples are in a room everybody except Thomas. And so Thomas is somewhere doing his own thing when Jesus in his resurrection body appears to the disciples in a room. And he shows them his hands and his feet and his side and tells them that he is risen. And so their first reaction is to run and tell Thomas who they've just seen, but he doesn't respond like we think he would. Instead of emphatic joy and belief, he says famously, unless I see the scars in his hands and his feet and his side, unless I touch them myself, I will never believe. Now, those are harsh words coming from someone who spent years with Jesus. That's gritty, raw doubt, real time disbelief. I want you to know that if you are struggling with those questions, Thomas sat in that state for what John says was eight days, an eight day period between when Jesus appeared to the disciples and Thomas found out and didn't believe. Eight days had passed, which means that even in your confusion, even in your doubt, even with unanswered questions, you still have a community. You can belong before you believe. That's what happened to Thomas. And once those eight days passed, something incredible happens. The disciples are in a locked room. Thomas is with them this time, and suddenly, Jesus appears. The doors are locked, everything's closed, and yet somehow he finds himself in the room with his disciples again. And this time, Thomas is forced to eat his words as Jesus says to him, here are my hands, here's my side, see my scars, and touch them. But John never says that he does. He never says that Thomas fulfilled his own requirements of God to believe. Instead, he claims my Lord and my God. What this tells me is that Jesus didn't doubt Thomas in his doubt, and he doesn't doubt you either. You know what Thomas was doing while Jesus was defeating the final enemy, was changing the world as we know it? Nothing. He was in pain and sorrow, but that didn't change who Jesus was. It didn't change the reality of who he was to Thomas. So Thomas is confronted with Jesus, and I think he's saying to him and he's saying to us, don't doubt you in your doubt. You can belong before you believe. This is a safe place for you to answer questions, and what else Jesus is faithful to answer our questions. But he might not look like we think it's going to look. It didn't look that way for Thomas. Thomas himself didn't follow through with his own plans, but he still believed. But there's something more powerful even than what we've seen so far, something that Jesus is showing us about the journey that we're on. 
this quest to have our questions answered, to get everything solved. You know, Jesus was raised with his scars. In his resurrection body, he still bore the marks of his life. What that tells us is this process matters. Not only is he faithful to us to get our questions answered, it might not look like we thought it would, but the pain, the sorrow, the experience of our life that we think keeps us from being the Christian we're supposed to be or having the relationships with God or others that we're supposed to, that process matters. And one day our scars and our wounds and our open-ended questions will one day be glorified and used to help others in our life, just like Jesus did to Thomas. So maybe this week you need to start the uncomfortable process of embracing your questions, embracing the unknowns, and taking a step into the mystery that is our faith. And know that as you do that, Jesus isn't just around, he's faithful. He doesn't doubt you in your doubt. You have a place in this community during that process.